Well, I believe that if uh, Ramli is to become a president, uh, he may very well take somewhat different approach to the Middle East. But there's no question in my mind that he will be much more, even more supportive of the, of the Israeli position. Uh, I am not so sure that he will be able to push too hard in order to achieve a peace between at least Israelis and the Palestinians. Because as you, can, as you know, the, there are many in, very intractable issues between the two sides. Uh, these issues require significant concessions from both sides. And here comes the question, will he be in a position to put the kind of pressure on Israel in particular to make that kind of concession? And the second question is, of course, will be, being that the Palestinians are so factional and divided, will they be able to make the necessary concessions before they can present a sort of united front that will um, allow them to make these concessions and also receive the public approval. So uh, I think President Obama <coughs> had a great chance when he first came uh, to the presidency, going back almost four years, by making the Middle East peace process and the Israeli-Palestinian peace a priority. Unfortunately, his approach may have been somewhat uh, faulty in the sense that he put um, the issue of the settlement first and foremost. This is, a, as you know, it's an extremely sensitive issue for the, for the Israelis. And it was, for all intent and purposes, non-starter. Uh, very few people expected Netanyahu to say no uh, in a categorical manner. Uh, but be that as it may now, three and a half, four years later, he definitely, if he is re-elected, has another chance. But this time, I think, he is in a position to put more pressure on both sides, not just Israel, to sit down and negotiate uh, a peace agreement between the two sides. Is it, a, is it possible? I think peace is absolutely possible. But the question is, how do you go about it? And I think you have three steps you need to take. I think the president, first and foremost, ought to make a trip to Israel and to the Palestinian territories. He missed that in the, in the first term by going to four Muslim states and skipped Israel. And the Israelis did not that, take that well. So a trip to that, to Israel and the Palestinian territories, specifically to Israel, addressing the Israeli public, making the United States commitment to Israel national security, to the Israeli public directly, this will have a tremendous impact in my view. The second step, he cannot start these negotiations from scratch. He must go back to prior understanding agreement, an agreement between Israel and the Palestinians, both in, 2000, in the year 2000 between the former Prime Minister Ehud Barak, currently the Defense Minister, and in 2008 and nine with the Prime Minister Olmert in negotiating with Mahmoud Abbas. In both occasions, both situations, they have reached tremendous, they have made tremendous um, progress. So the president ought to take the various areas in which they have agreed and create a sort of a, a framework for peace based on some of these agreements. And that is critically important. That is, the United States ought to come up with a plan, not merely asking the party to sit down and negotiate. I think that would go nowhere. Uh, and the third element, without any question, the United States itself will have to have a strategy that is bad, you know, fallback situation. What happens if they say no? It would have to have a contingency plan. That is, would it be in a position to put exert far greater pressure than uh, can other side expect? In the final analysis, without the United States, neither the Israelis nor the Palestinians can achieve peace. And this is where we, uh, the new, you know, the President Obama, if he is re-elected, this is, his, again, his last chance to do so, especially if he wants to leave a legacy of peace behind him.